Hello everyone, my name is Elliot Newton, I'm the Biodiversity Officer for Kingston Council and welcome to the second episode of Reading Nature, which is the sessions that we are running to try and get you outdoor, outdoors into our green spaces to try and enjoy nature and learn about the nature that we have here in Kingston, which makes it so special. And I'm here in the uh, Barrowlands Nature Reserve by the uh, Wildlife Pond, one of my favourite nature reserves that we have in Kingston. It's got a fantastic friends, friends group, which I I implore you all to join, or at least Google, and I'm here to tell you about the amazing world of dragonflies. <laughs> so what is it you've got to show us about okay, dragonflies? Okay, so over here I've got, um, um, so dragonflies are typically associated with our sort of summer months, and they bring amazing colour. We've got about 30 odd species of dragonfly and about 20 odd species of damselfly. A lot of people might not know the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly, so I'm going to try and tell you the difference right away. Excellent. So, this here is picture of a dragonfly and this is our biggest dragonfly called an emperor dragonfly and if you look at him you can see this is a male oh, it is a male because it's got a lovely blue collar and it's got a quite a rigid structure and its wings are sticking out and it's you see its eyes are it's quite close together beautiful isn't it and this is very much a dragonfly um oh can you hear the woodpecker <laughs> oh where's the woodpecker anyway i'll tell you about woodpeckers in the next episode um and this is a damselfly. Oh, they're very different, aren't they? This is what we call a white-legged damselfly. And you can see it's very different in yeah. sort of shape and morphology to the other one. If you look yeah. at its wings, how it's carrying its wings when it's perched, its wings aren't sticking out like this, but they're tucked behind like that. And it just looks a lot more fragile, a lot more dainty. And its eyes aren't touching. They're actually separated on sort of stalks. So they're very sort of clear ways that you can tell the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly. Yeah. As I say, we typically associate these with our sort of summer months when we come out and enjoy a summer's day and you can see the males fighting each other. Typically the males are bright colours and the females are a little bit darker. Um, but they also have a very interesting life in the winter and that's where they spend most of their life. A dragonfly will spend most of its life in this stage. So, so I'm what have you got to show so us I'm here? Show you. This is what we call the exuva of uh, a nymph. Um, so dragonflies spend maybe up to two years or so underwater in a pond very much like this. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a, a casing of an emperor dragonfly, so the dragonfly I just showed you, and it was taken from this very pond. And they spend most of their life in this stage, swimming around. And this is a slightly bigger version of it. I think in this stage, they have the most fascinating, um, fascinating behaviour. They really are incredible creatures, and they look pretty scary too. So, in this stage, they're what we call ambush predators. So they're absolutely voracious predators. But they haven't, in this stage, they haven't got the fantastic eyes that they do in the adult stage. So it means they have to pretty much creep up or sort of ambush their predators when they or ambush their prey when they're going past. Um, so, dragonflies when they're in the larval stage, have absolutely amazing, amazing ecology and amazing sort of adaptations to help them survive. So the most important thing that I think that uh, a, a dragonfly larval nymph has to offer is its bottom. And its bottom is really incredible for three reasons. Okay. Its bottom is where it breathes, typically. It's how it, how it'll breathe. And because it can't breathe... Breathe through its bottom? It breathes through its bottom. Oh Very goodness. strange. A lot of aquatic beetles and uh, insects do that, actually. It's, uh -huh. quite, it's quite a normal thing to do in pond, the pond world. And secondly, it uses its bottom as a mini jetpack. So what it'll do, it will suck in water and it will squirt it out and it'll use it to propel itself wow. underwater. Because obviously at this stage, it hasn't got wings or, you know, it's quite difficult to move underwater, so it's a really efficient way to move. But the most important thing that I think it does for um, uh, the, the way it uses its bottom is it helps power its jaw. So dragonflies are really voracious predators underwater. They're what we call ambush predators. And when there is a creature, which might be a small insect or even a small fish, they'll think that is a good meal for me. So what they do, they'll suck water into their, into their, sort of, um, into their cavity and then they build up pressure and then they release that pressure, not through this end, but through their mouth end and it propels their projectile jaw. So their jaw will come out like this and grab the insect or the fish that it's trying to predate on, grab it and then pull it back in and eat it. That's remarkable. So it is a really interesting, rather scary way to live their life, but they are absolutely amazing predators. And after about um, maybe two years or so, they'll be, I'm fed up being a larva or a nymph now, 
I want to be an adult. So what they'll do, they'll climb a reed such as behind me and they'll grapple onto it. They'll grapple onto the reed like this and then if you can, if you can try and see it, there's a little hole here in which the adult will try and squeeze out of and emerge and then he'll pump his wings up and then fly away and live for maybe only a few weeks or months in the adult stage where they look a lot more colourful and then we obviously see them a lot, a lot better. Wow. Um, so yeah, really incredible life cycle. And when they are an adult, they go to being amazing predators then too, but a slightly different way of predating on things. So they have incredible eyesight. Whereas in the nymph stage, they've got really poor eyesight. They now have amazing eyesight. They can pretty much see in 360, which is just incredible. Imagine if you could see in 360. But the most sensitive part of their eyes is the forward facing area just in front of them right like here. So what they'll do, they'll fly low typically, and then they'll fly up just at the last stage and grab the, um, pr pr the prey that it's trying to, 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 to eat. And it'll grab it out and then, and all dragonflies are quite rare insects in the fact that they have teeth. So they have very small teeth, they can't impact us. They would be scary if they were bigger. And actually, if we went back 250 million years, we had dragonflies which were about, had a foot wingspan. Wow. We haven't got that anymore, obviously. This is our biggest dragonfly. They must have like... made so much noise when oh. they were flying. Yeah, wow. God, they make big enough noise now. Yeah, so exactly. Just, just yeah. imagine the noise. Absolutely incredible, scary creatures. Yeah. But they, these present no danger to us whatsoever. Um, but obviously, if you're a small insect, it's a very different story. So what they do, they grab it out of the sky, and they'll take it over to um, a, uh, a perch, and then they'll, they'll, they'll eat it with their quite sharp teeth. So yeah, incredible creatures. Do look out for them, both in the summer and in the winter. It's a great thing to do pond dipping with. So yeah, look out for our amazing dragonflies. Brilliant, how interesting. Thank you. <laughs> no worries.